Shumai Kroiso, hello and welcome to episode 52 of the Bluebirds Nest. One of this season's breakthrough talents in the first team joining me this week. And I think in the words of uh, Mika Richards, burst onto the scene earlier this season. I think particularly looking back at that first start for me anyway, up at Connors Key on that on that Sunday afternoon. But yeah, joining me on this episode is our number 54, it's Jacob Owen. Jacob, welcome uh, to the Bluebirds Nest. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Ray. Really appreciate it. Nice to have a chat. I said to you a couple of weeks ago that I was going to have you on in in the upcoming <laughs> week, so it's it's great to get you on and have a chat with you and find out about sort of where your head's at with this whirlwind season, I guess. But before we get into the present day, I'll I'll say loosely, let's go back in time because it's not so distant days ago. Your, your junior football, you know, where, where did it start for you then? Where did football start for you? Well, uh, it actually started in Haverford West, funny enough. So I started off in Haverford West Cricket Club. At, uh, I think I was about five, five or six. I was there from, yeah, under six till under sevens. Then we actually then moved over then to Haverford West County. And I was there for pretty much a season. Then we played against Cardiff and then Swansea. And from there, that's, well, from signed from Swansea then, under eights all the way up till under 16s. Amazing, amazing. Your time at Swansea then, you know, it's, we, we've spoken to others in the past who've been at Swansea City, you know, a couple of times a week or, you know, I think back then Lamb was going to Cardiff twice a week. What was that commitment like on the family then? This, you know, it's a big one. Yeah, it was quite tough to be fair. I think we were training four times a week and then yeah. travelling, yeah, Sundays, games. It was, it was quite tough. Yeah. Obviously living in Huck and have dress at the time. It's a bit of a journey for my parents. We, well, we were quite lucky. There's a bit. There's a few of us from down this way who could share a bit of a car school sort of thing. But yeah, yeah it was. It was quite tough, especially as a youngster. But I was just, I was just loving it because yeah. it's just all you, all you want to do playing for Swans, <laughs> like a team like Swansea. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, your time with the academy, and I don't know. I'm thinking of the timelines. Did you cross over with Tony Panak or, or Waggy at all then? So yeah, I th- so I think when I first I will be play- so we played against Swansea um, as like a game for Haverford West County, and funny enough, I don't know if Waggy remember this, but he was the one that actually scouted me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he, yeah, he came up and said, "We want to bring you on trial, six week trial," and then yeah, he, he start from there. I think Tony was the academy manager for a bit and I can't remember how long because he was obviously a bit higher up I didn't really get to see him as much but yeah there's he did I think the cross path of both Tony and Waggy which is quite funny but yeah yeah is there anyone sort of from your age range you know your age grouping or above or below that sort of have gone on and and featured you know I'm thinking perhaps is Liam Cullen about a similar age group to you he's a few years older than me a few years older than me is Two boys my age, I think Ben Lloyd, yeah. Joel Cottrell, they've made a few, I think they've made their debuts. They Well, they started same similar time to me, under eights, to under tens, I think. So, okay. yeah, it's, it's, but yeah. Okay. So, Academy, obviously your, your development as a footballer, you've had a great school in there. But with regards to your education, um, I've been dying to ask you this because obviously when – when you sort of started uh, with the first team over the last few months and that, I, I heard whispers of, you know, you'd been away for two years, uh, up in red in the Bradfield College between 2021 and 23, I think it was. I've had a look at their website over the last few days and it, it obviously, you know, it looks a great place. It's promoting, obviously, the academic side of stuff. But what I quite liked is um, it really does focus on the extracurricular, you know, the sporting activities and, it said, you know, it's a real big part of your time at the college is about the extracurricular sporting activities. Uh, so you were you were captain of the first football team, I believe, up there, were you? <laughs> yeah, I was. It was well, it, what an experience that was for me. Two years, like staying away, away from yeah. family and stuff. It was it was great. Like I really loved my time there, and it was it was good to have an education behind my back as well, which was good. But the the football was. It was something else. I, the coach I had, he was amazing. The teammates I had, they were. It's just they've gone on to do big things as well. And it's, it wasn't just about the football. There was it was the all round side of it, like the psychology, mm. uh, the gym sessions, everything. It was yeah. I 
I was so grateful for the opportunity oh, I had there, and it was yeah, it was amazing. Your your fixtures then? Did you play against other colleges in the area? Or how does that work? So yeah, it was it was like a huddle league. It was called. We were in it, and we played against like colleges across uh, England and stuff. And we I think we was two cup competitions as well, which won them. We actually did really well, and we got to the final and won it. It was in the MK Milton Kings Stadium, yep. which is great. Another great experience, like playing in front of the whole school. Um, probably, well, probably the biggest crowd I've definitely played in. So, school yeah, far, school far. So <laughs> far. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this, we also, I also then went on to the England schoolboys uh, and 18s, mm -hmm. um, played against H, funny enough. Um, oh, did you? Oh, wow! Well, yeah, yeah. There's a photo of me running, running, running past him. Oh, <laughs> like to like to wind him up about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> also, you mentioned your education, there, and obviously, you know, to, to have that behind you, qualifications and and a career. You've you've returned home now after your schooling and and an accountancy uh, career, I think, is it? Yes. So I've gone into that. I've just, I'm really enjoying it to be fair at the moment. It's uh, doing it a few days a week um, whenever they kind of need me at the moment. And obviously it's been quite a busy period with that at the moment. So it's, it's good to, it's good for something to just to kind of take your mind off football as well. Sometimes it's, it can be quite an intense environment and stuff, but yeah, yeah it was, it was a, uh, it's, it's really good for me to just be able to do something alongside my football as well. Love it. Excellent. Let's, let's talk football then. Uh, obviously, Steve Batty, Dan and Nash involved in the development squad brought you the sort of upon your return home from uh, from Bradford College. You joined your brother, for those of you that don't know. Obviously, Luke Owen, he's two years younger than you, but you know he's been excelling at the academy over, over the last few years. I really got to know Luke as part of the, the European adventures last summer, you know, he, he traveled with us, particularly to the Faroe Islands and, and was it at Cardiff as well? He didn't get on, but you know, for him to experience that at 17, you know, alongside some of his mates as well, obviously Harry and Dan and Yari, Ivan, you know, all the sort of crowd that were there, what, you know, it was only, I suppose at the time you were joining the club, but as big brother, I suppose in, <laughs> I'm assuming in, in the stands watching along, what was it like to see Luke on the pitch then, you know, warming up and, and being a part of that? Yeah, what an experience for him and well, and everyone involved, to be honest. Yeah. It was, I was gutted not to be a part of him, but yeah, it was, it was great. But it was just so good to see, you know, like all the youngsters there. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Dan, Harry and all them being involved in like a massive opportunity for the club and everything like that. So yeah, it was it was great watching him. I think I was there. Well, I was there for the Macedonia. Watched the against North Macedonia. Watched that in Cardiff, and um, and then he heard he was going to the Faroe Islands, and he was he was obviously well. He was chuffed with, with that, and he was then sending me the photos of them on the private jet and everything like that. So <laughs> he was trying to rub it into me. Yeah, <laughs> The yeah, the competition between me and him. <laughs> Is it right? Okay, You're quite competitive. But yeah, definitely. Me and him definitely quite competitive. It's, okay. It's like, yeah, we're both trying trying to see who scores more goals to the end of the night. Like <laughs> I love it. That's that's awesome. And like you say, you know, you would only just join the club. I think looking forward. Who knows? There might be other European adventures to come in in your time at the club. Fingers crossed. But. Yeah, you, you mentioned the development squad there then. So I think, you, well, to say you quickly made your mark, you, you you burst on the scene. I think it was one appearance against Ponte Dower, I think, early uh, early in the season, I think it was. You made an assist on your debut. Yeah. I, I remember hearing about that. And a week or so later, called up to the first team squad. Nice, easy start, I think, for you. A way to take it out as well. Oh, <laughs> Hear about that call up then? You know, had you, had you been training with the first at that time? So I, it, it kind of went quite quickly. Like I can't really remember. <laughs> it's been it's, time's gone so quickly since I first joined. It's just gone, yeah. Like I said, so quickly. But I think I, th I think I was training a bit because I was training a bit in the summer and I wasn't really sure what I was doing. 
mm. um, whether I was staying down here or going back up, I just wasn't really sure. But I so I end. I think I was training a few times, and I think the game after the Pont de I think Penn said for me to come train with the first team permanently um, on Tuesday and Wednesdays. Mm. Um, and I think then, yeah, I got the. I saw, I think I saw my name on the on our, met, on our WhatsApp group that I was uh, <laughs> in the squad, and I was yeah, mm-hmm. obviously, I was really happy to be, yeah. be a part of it. And, well, against the best team in the league this year, winning mm-hmm. the obviously they went then winning the league. Um, yeah, it's great. It's just like it's great to be a part of the dressing room and stuff like that. I've never been part of a men's you know yeah, environment. Of course. Of course. So, so yeah, it was. It was a good feeling just to be able to see what it was like and I think after that then you get used to it and it's just settling in with all the boys and who well they did a great job helping me settle in it was really they made it really easy so yeah I was going to ask yeah. you about it do you know it's at times I guess I've spoken to Yari in the past and even H and, and and those sort of guys who have come in and I always think the jazz you know you've got a guy in there who's, who's played you know, 14 times, I think, is for the Welsh national squad, who's, who's made to Gareth Bale and that's, you know, that sort of <laughs> level. And you're coming into the dressing room. What are people like Jazz and some of the other senior guys? How have they been like? You, you said they helped you. You know, I'm sure they don't take it easy on you on the pitch, but what are they like in the changing room? Yeah, no, they're great in the changing room. Like you said, on the pitch, they expect high standards of you because the, they obviously want to train to the best of their abilities as well. So, you know, it's it, that's it's like that everywhere. You you got to get used to that quite quite quickly. Um, but it's yeah, no, it's great. They they've really helped me. Like just it, they just so easy, just so friendly. I think you could see that even when I was watching from like stands in Cardiff playing the Europa, European games, it was you could see the atmosphere and it was a great culture the team seemed yeah. to be. So it it was definitely something that appealed to me. Mm. Um, down here so yeah yeah i've mentioned a couple of times i think that the amount of traveling and time spent together as a group particularly the players the staff and the whole you know everybody those those downtime periods you know when we are in skopje in north macedonia going for a walk and eating together and almost socializing together i suppose that that really sort of like you said i like the word culture you use there that that created that environment so that that's really good to hear um, for you then, sort of playing wise, you featured in a number of positions this year. I think when you came on a sub for the first time, you you came on at right back. So you've played in defensive positions. You've played in quite attacking ones too. But while well, saying that, you played centre mid in the game that I said you, your first start at Bacana's Key. Uh, we, we'll mention, we'll talk about that because I thought you were excellent that day. But have you have you got a preferred position? Where, where do you like playing the most? I think I do prefer playing on the right hand side. I think it's just feel where I've played all my life. I think I've felt quite natural there. Um, mm. But then again, I, I enjoyed my time playing in midfield in Connors Key and against yeah. Cardiff Met. So it was. I don't. Know, I think. I think looking forward, I would like to play on the right hand side. I think that's just. Yeah, where I, where I want to play. I just I just want to be playing. That's the main yeah. thing. I think, especially my age now i want to be playing getting on uh getting as many appearances as i can it's just getting the experiences um and just developing against some of the best players in the league and playing against them week in week out yeah love it that's a great attitude to have you know and that thing i, I only ask because like i said i've seen you on the left in the middle on the right and i, I don't even know where i think your best position is because you've, you've not done really well but i said the corner's key one let's go back to that game it was a it was a, a random Sunday fixture, wasn't it? Back in, in November. Yeah. And literally in the dressing room. Is that where you found out it was going to be your first start? Yeah, I had no idea. So, <laughs> well, Penns was going through the lineup and he was, because obviously I played right back, a few, I think it was like two weeks before we had yeah. Aberystwyth stuff or something. Um, he was going through the team and my name didn't come up in defence. So I was like, okay, so I'm on the bench, just, on the bench this week. And then all of a sudden he said, Jacob, you're in midfield today, and that's, that was the well. It's the first time I'd ever played midfield in my career, so okay. it was like okay. So, so I thought, you know, what, I'm just gonna give it my best shot and just really enjoy the experience because not many yeah. times you get to make your debut against second in the leagues, yeah. <laughs> and 
a big game like that. So yeah, I was just wanted to enjoy myself, and mm-hmm. it was, I think it was me, me, Harrett, H, and uh, Watsy in the middle, <laughs> which was yeah, it's great. I remember it well. It was a good, uh, it was a good Sunday afternoon, and to be honest, I remember hearing of the team before it was an announced sort of in the dressing room to the players and i must admit i haven't told you this i did have one eye on you in the dressing room just to see your reaction and it, it was a good reaction <laughs> to see. like i think you know some in your shoes would have perhaps shown signs of a nerve or a being a bit sort of perhaps even overwhelmed i suppose but you could see by it you were like your eyes lit up and it was like right and like you just said that you relished the opportunity and you haven't looked back i suppose you know you have featured a couple of times since and uh as you've mentioned, you're holding your own in the dressing room, which is uh, which is full of characters. And what I, you know, can also see, you've still featured for the development squad. You know, you're still getting lots of game time there. Do you think your experiences, you know, are they are they young, you know, younger, perhaps, you know, like I said, you're you're 19, you're perhaps one of the older ones now having those opportunities. Are the younger ones in the development squad sort of speaking to you about it and asking you what it's like? Yeah, definitely. They they ask the well, especially the first few times where I was up there and playing, they they were asking all like how was it and stuff like that and playing against like players that they've seen. Um, what was it like playing against him? <laughs> I think it's just, um, but yeah, they they just, they've all the development squad has done really well this year, and I think it's credit to all the academy st- staff mm-hmm. and all all the staff in the club because you know we've we've as a team we've grown so much since the start of the season i think and it's great that so many boys have had opportunities in the first team you mentioned my brother earlier and obviously a few other a few others as well which is it's great it just shows that they show a lot of trust in the youngsters as well which is great because there's plenty of opportunities for them then going forward it's i say this all the time it's a conveyor belt of of talent coming through and and it's great to see that you know, there's a real focus of of local Pembrokeshire youngsters having the opportunity. Great to see. Um, you mentioned there that they're, they're going well. They are. You got two goals and an assist, I think, uh, last weekend in your five nil out in. I think it's it's certainly keeping hopes uh, alive of of a league title. I think it's nine points behind, but three games in hand, I believe, of, of top spot. But we will let uh, Steve Barty and the squad just just go about their business. I think we won't dive into that conversation too much, but who knows what's to come? Uh, but we will all be keeping a close eye on it. Um, but what I will say in the last few weeks, it was announced that you've signed your first pro contract for the club. How uh, how did that come about, and how are you feeling about that? Yes, yeah, so I think I think after the the Connors key came, uh, Pence came up to me in training and said he'd like to offer me obviously. A professional contract and yeah it was obviously I it didn't get announced uh till January because I couldn't sign it till January um but yeah it was I was obviously delighted to hear that he was willing to give me a chance and yeah I'm, I was delighted to just sign for the next 18 months um to kind of I knew where I was going to be playing so it, and it was obviously a lot of boys have signed new contracts as well, which is nice because you're all familiar faces and stuff. Excellent. Love that. And I think, uh, like you said, 18 months to go. It's, uh, it's the future's bright for you. And hopefully that's just the start of your uh, career that, uh, at the Pembrokeshire Bluebirds. Um, next question now is, it's a big one. And I've toyed whether to ask you this because obviously, you know, it's, it's a tough place to go in the dressing room if you don't pick somebody in the next question now or not. But <laughs> I've seen you holding your own uh, amongst the group there. So I will ask it to you. We're, we're going to build your your dream bluebird now. The, the question I've posed many of the players who I've spoken to this year. Um, obviously, over the car, the course of the last seven to eight months now, you've you've played and trained with with many first teamers. So we're going to we're going to build up the six parts to the player. Um, right foot, left foot, technical ability, aerial ability, a talker, and the footballing brain. So six components that will make your your dream player. So no pressure at all, Jacob. Right <laughs> foot, you go first. Well, uh, to be fair, I have been. Uh, I have obviously watched a few episodes, so I have been just thinking about it, ah, like just in the background, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> um, I think right for I'm gonna go for Jack Willie. 
um, like sighting some of the crosses he puts in um, in training. He's just, he's just like with, he's just I don't know. He just just does things you just you just mm-hmm. don't expect and just yeah. I just think he's. I'll agree with that. Best right <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, we'll leave with the right foot. Who's uh, who's your left foot? I think it's got to be Abu. His, his left foot is, you see him spraying diags, free kicks, crosses. He's just like a little wizard. <laughs> yeah, fair play to him. He, obviously, his goals and his assists have, uh, have really gone up this season. And obviously, in the Wales C squad and in, in the coming fixture as well, having a great season, to be fair to him, Abu. Good stuff. Okay, technical ability. This was this was a tough one. Was this it was a tough one. Yeah, but I think I'm going to give it to Kai Whitmore. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, just going to be happy with that one with you now. Yeah, you? I know, I know. <laughs> I think obviously, Kai's a bit old. H's got plenty of plenty of time behind Quite him. Right. So, right. um, I'll give it to Kai for now. <laughs> okay, okay, aerial ability. Another tough one, but I think it's got to be Jenks. He, he never loses a header. I don't think I've seen him lose a header this year, so I think that has to go to him. <laughs> Again, another one of our Wales Sea internationals playing uh, against England next week. Uh, Talker. This might come as a bit of a surprise. Um, well, not a surprise, but I haven't been in the team with him yet. But the impact he has on the dressing room is massive, and I think that obviously goes to Dylan, Dylan Reist. Um he The way he's just been able to help me as well, even though he hasn't been playing, he's been great. He just sp- speaks to everyone. He's so positive, even with his injury. So mm-hmm. obviously I can't wait. Hopefully he can be back as soon as possible now and get playing with him next year. Definitely, definitely. You know, And we've spoken about this so many times this season. Him, Scotch, Kaya Parton, it's been, it's, they've been big losses, not only to the on-field, but like you say, the dressing room, they do have their impact. But, you know, with them going into battle, they're, they're three great guys who we've missed throughout the whole season. So, again, unsurprising to you, Dylan, being mentioned for that one. And football in brain now, then, the final one. Well, I think this this has to go to Jazz <laughs> with the experiences <laughs> he's had. Um, it's something I don't admire and there's a lot of respect for him for what he's done. So, I think that definitely... Play, especially playing in like the Euros, <laughs> I, think, I think I remember watching him against Belgium, marking Eden Hazard. <laughs> it's just, it's just crazy. <laughs> That's some player you built there, Jacob. Like the look of that, and I think looking ahead to this weekend's fixtures, we could do with somebody like that uh, turning up. <laughs> We've got the the West Coast derby this weekend, or Friday night, I should say, actually. Arborist with visiting the Augie Bridge Meadow. The Seasiders took the spoils earlier in Phase 2, so uh, it's going to be another dramatic evening of Cymru Premier Football. I'm uh, I'm sure of that. 7.45 kickoff. Last week brought the biggest crowd of the season so far. It was 698 at the Augie Bridge Meadow last Friday night. So to all those that did attend, thank you very much, but please do come back this week. Your, uh, I think the support really does make a big difference, you know, when we're playing at home and, and people are, are shouting and cheering for us. But you've always had a good reception, to be fair, when you've come on. And, you know, when you're running along the touchline in your warm-ups and that, I always hear the, the supporters, you know, along that touchline cheering on. But what's it like then, you know, hearing that, you know, the drum and the singing as, as support for you? What's that like? It's great. It's, it's what every footballer wants to be involved in. You want to be playing when fans are singing. It's it's amazing. The I think especially when especially when all the fans start singing, it really gives the boys a big boost. It's like the, especially the last fifteen minutes, twenty minutes of a game. Um, yeah, the atmosphere can be is what can be great at times. So hopefully, mm-hmm. the last few games of the season now, I just want everyone in full voice. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely, I'll uh, I'll echo those thoughts. And it's interesting you say that and you think of how many late goals we have had and, you know, I'm thinking Barry away. We had a great following that night. Abu's free kick against Carnarvon. You know, they, they can really support the boys and get them over the line sometimes. So, yeah, highly encourage uh, nice and loud this Friday night for those that are coming down to see that fixture. But let's look ahead of that, then, Jacob, for the rest of the season. You've said, you know, 18 months 
of a deal and things. What are your aims now then for, for that period in front of you for this season and the next? I think obviously just to play as much as I can, um, help the team as much as I can, uh, keep pushing pushing everyone every day in training. Um, I think it's really good when there's a lot of competition. So obviously make sure everyone is on their A game. Um, mm-hmm. But yes, yeah, so I think that's hopefully, you know, with the end of the season, get, make sure we get seventh place. And I think take every game as it comes, you know, don't look too far ahead into the future. Um, I think take it step by step and you never know. Hopefully we know. may end up on another European journey. <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. You're a you're a wise head on uh, on young shoulders, Jacob. But fair play, it's it's been great having you on. It's been good uh, good to catch up and find out more about you. Like I said, that I I knew little bits, but it's been good to have that further insight. But good luck for the rest of the season. Really looking forward to uh, making an impact. Like I said, over the next eighteen months. Fingers crossed, we can get on the the first team goal scoring uh, trail very very soon as well. But uh, yeah, fingers crossed for, and and. Hopefully, many successful seasons ahead of you at the club. But I'll, uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow for fingers crossed three points at the meadow. Yeah, thank you very much, Ray, for having me on. Come on, the bluebirds. <laughs> <laughs>